Hello, in this video I'm gonna briefly show you how to decode and open Gerda Z Higgs. Uh, as you know, it, uh, this lock is promoted as a lock with uh, several millions of uh, combinations. This is uh, because it has four rows of pins. They are positioned like this, A, B, C and D. So every row has four pins. In total we have 16 pins with four different depths which indeed uh, makes it uh, a lock with a couple of millions of combinations. It is uh, an amazing lock, very strong one. You cannot drill it on top of it because this is a stainless, uh, it's a stainless steel. If you try to drill it from the inside, you will most probably end breaking up your tool and blocking the whole system. There is no point of drilling it here because the uh, locking mechanism is it's uh, positioned here in the cylinder. Additionally, the cylinder and the base of the lock are very uh, tight and they're very strong and you cannot rip it off. It leaves us with very few uh, options here. Uh, you cannot, uh, I, I, may, I may say that you cannot pick it with the conventional pick kits that you can find on the market. It will take you a million uh, age, uh, years to do it, so it's a nonsense thing to do. Uh, Gerda, it has uh, Gerda lock. It has many certificates. It's uh, seventh uh, class in terms of uh, security, which uh, makes it one of the challenges of the of today's market. So, of course, we have uh, after analyzing it, we have managed to understand that. It is very strong, but the pins, they can be visually decoded. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do it really, really easy. Now we have come to, uh, to the first stage of uh, decoding Gerda. With this Gerda pin finder, I'm going to locate the code 1, white in color. Uh, how will I do that? I'm just going to insert, you can see these are the two components. I'm just gonna fully insert the Gerda pin finder into the deepest point and now I'm gonna extract it like this. Now here I have one hole. By inserting the Gerda pin finder I have put away every pin on this lock. The point here is to try and locate code one in the four rings that uh, we're having. As you can see on the diagram here I have ring 1, ring 2, ring 3 and ring 4 and these are the uh, positions. Now every pin is put away now I will pull out just a little bit until I release the pins from ring 1. Listen now. I hope you heard that. Now the pins from ring 1 are now released which means that if I go with the flashlight uh, from the tube here and if I uh, take a look at it from the inside I will be able to see the four, the four pins. Four of them like this. One, two, three, four. After I'm done I will proceed with the second ring pulling out my Gerda pin finder just a little bit like this. I hope that you heard. Now the second uh, ring is released, so if I look with the flashlight I'm gonna see the second ring and all four pins. And this is how uh, we are gonna locate pins of type code After I know one. this, we know that for sure these are ones, the other we are gonna name them code Higgs, code X as you wish. This here is my anti-pick key. This is where I'm gonna fill position uh, code, code 1 and code Higgs. You can see it here that we have line A. Line A corresponds to row A, which is this one. So this is a ring and this is a row or a line. Row A. 
this one. So in row A I must put the following pins. One, hex, hex and hex. This is, you can see it, it's now empty. Now I will unscrew, and now you see it, hex, hex, hex and one. And now at the end I will put my and stopper, now, line one is ready. I'm gonna proceed doing this with the remaining three lines which are B, C and D. I'm gonna put hex, hex, one hex, one hex, 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 one, one hex, hex. And my setup and my anti-pick key will be ready. Now my anti-pick key is ready. You can see that all lines are now filled. Now in this stage I must give a face to the X key X code, meaning I must understand the difference between code hex, code X and code 4. So for this I will need these rings. Four of them, ring one, uh, two, two, three, those four, four uh, keys to determine whether I will leave my code hex or I will fill it with code four. Now, this is the tension tool I'm gonna I'm use. I'm gonna insert it and I'm gonna leave it like this to hang. Now, I'm gonna grab my anti pick key and I'm gonna insert it like this in the neutral position. From this position, I will pick the tension to just a little bit and I will start giving tension to the to the right. With the anti pick key, I'm gonna turn it to the right also. You heard the click. Now I will return my anti pick key and I'm gonna simply simply eject it. Now the most important part here is keep holding the tension. I'm gonna grab ring one. This is my orientation point here, so insert it with orientation point pointing up. Insert it and now start turning it position let me position a b c and d so i turn it position a it's free position b no i cannot turn it so position a it goes it passes freely but when i go position b it's stuck I will try now on the other side to position D. You can see it goes freely. And position C, it goes freely. So, free on the A, free on the D, free on the C. Only position B is so a problem. In ring one, we will have one, hex, one, one. Go two, orientation point up, insert. Now, go try to turn it, I try to turn it to position A, I cannot turn it. I will pull out my key and insert it once again to try to turn it to position B. Again, nothing. So, and whatever I do, it's stuck on position A here and position B here. You can see, I cannot turn it. It's very hard. So, I will eject it. Insert it once again in neutral position and try to turn it to D. You can see it goes it goes freely on the D and it goes freely on the C. So in A and in B ring two in A in B we will have position X because I cannot go through with the key like this ring 2 hicks hicks and on the C 
I will show you once again. I go through very easy. So if I go through it very easy and if it's not code 1, this leaves me with the opportunity only to be code 4. My second ring will be Higgs, Higgs, 4 and 1. I'm done with ring 2. Code 3. Insert orientation point. Now, turn it to the, try to turn it to position A, no, to position, to position D, freely, to position C, freely, on this side, D and C, this was my neutral position, D, C, freely, position A, no, I will eject it, turn it like this, Position B, freely. So, Higgs, 1, 4, 4. Now I'm left with the fourth ring. Ring 4, orientation point, insert. Try to turn it to the right, to the A position, nothing. Okay, let's try to eject it and insert it like this to try position B freely good I will eject it now insert it in neutral position once again D to the left nothing I cannot go through eject reverse C nothing so this leaves me with the following case. In A it was a non-go situation so it's a Higgs. In B I was able to go through it. Only in B I was able to go through it so the remaining will be Higgs. Higgs for Higgs Higgs. And now I know all codes and I am After we ready know to proceed the on the next. And how they go, we are ready to proceed with setting up our key. This is a setup key. As you can see it here again, it's the same as the anti-peak key. We have line A or row A, row B, row C and row D. They're all empty currently. Now, these are the three boxes, code 4, code Higgs, and code 1. Now, I'm just simply gonna unscrew this with the hex key and a line by line, meaning line by line or row by row, line 1, line B, line C and D, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna insert the codes. Now I have my setup key ready according to the codes and I just have to push this part here, tighten it like this. And let's try the lock. Let's try it inside our lock. If the codes are correct, insert it with this on top. Piece of cake. Make sure it's good, which it is, of course, because here we offer a non disruptive way of opening and decoding, decoding and opening. It was a pleasure to, to present uh, the Gerda kit from uh, Prodecoder. This was uh, prodecoders.com. Thanks for watching and uh, good luck.